Good morning and welcome to Coffee Talk. Um, I want to, something I want to share with you. So much on my mind right now, my, I'm like, my head is, my mind is racing. I can't form like a thought. Um, when I was in the relationship that I was in before Michael, a lot of what he was able to do to me through manipulation, emotional manipulation, he kept his thumb down on me like this, okay? I felt all the time fearful. I walked on eggshells. I never knew who or what I was going to get in my interaction with him. Um, and any time that I showed any outrage about his behavior, he would say, look at you, you're always overreacting. You know, everything with you is an overreact. You know, you're so dramatic. Blah. And for so long, I would turn inward. What's wrong with me? Why am I so dramatic? Why do I overreact? Is there a better way to approach him? I'm not getting through to him like this. What could I be doing differently? Blah, 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 blah. The truth is I was not overreacting. I was also not dramatic. I was actually just reacting to the abnormal amount of bullshit that I was being put through. That is the normal reaction when somebody keeps their thumb on you, when somebody manipulates you, when somebody creates an environment where you are forced to live in fear. You will eventually go, I... <laughs> No, I can't, what is, what is your problem? Why are you treating me this way? And of course it is normal, especially for the narcissist to go, me, what are you talking about? I'm just me. I'm just living. You're the one that's overreacting. You're the one that's so dramatic. And I want to tell you that that is not the case. If you are reacting to somebody who is manipulating you or emotionally controlling you or using fear um, and you finally have a reaction, that is normal. You are reacting to the situation. Do not let them tell you any different. Here's the, the interesting thing. I, I think so hard about why I allowed it to go on for so long. Like, how did I get to the point where I believed in my life in my mind, in my heart, that I hear you, bud, that that was okay for me. Come on. Look. Don't leave me out, mom. Don't ever leave me out. Um, and I get so many letters and so many women who are there in that space and they're being told that their feelings are dramatic, that they're overreacting. Um, and I am going to tell you this, and I need you to listen to me. You are not overreacting and you are not dramatic. You are in fact, simply dealing with an asshole. That is true. There are no other words I can use. I'm sure that there are some people are gonna be like, do you have to curse? I, I really try not to, but it gets to the point where I have no choice. There are no other words for it. Um, you are allowed to stand up for yourself. But here is the thing. If you are going to take a stand for yourself, get out of the situation. Get out of the situation because it will not get better. You will go, you know, like, um, what is it? What am I trying to think of? Um, nostalgia. <laughs> Such a liar, right? but there is comfort in going back to what you know. It's like picking up a really good book that you love or watching a movie that comes on, you know, like Steel Magnolias or Pretty Woman. It makes you feel good for a while, but you know how it's going to end, right? You know how it's going to end. You watch Titanic and every time the boat's going to sink and Jack's going to die. That is how it ends. Same thing with these types of relationships, friendships, whatever. That is how it ends. 
same ending. Yeah, it feels good, it's familiar when you go back, blah, 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 but the boat's gonna sink. There will be no different ending. So as long as you're okay knowing that, I'm gonna go back on this boat, but it's definitely gonna sink. I'm sorry, I'm like so frustrated right now by the amount of people who are being told that their feelings are not valid. It infuriates me when anybody has a real feeling towards a situation and they are dismissed. I, I think because I've been through it, it is, it is heartbreaking to me. Separately, I wanted to share something with you that happened yesterday. So Michael and I took the kids to um, Mexican yesterday um, and Charlie was exhausted and um, something that we were playing a time telling game. We play games with the kids at the table waiting for the food to come because I'm trying to avoid having them all look at daddy's phone watching a show. You know, I, I don't, I hate that. I'm really, I don't like that. So I bring board games. We're the, we're the family that sets up a whole board game. Anyway, we're playing a time telling game and Charlie, something happened and she didn't get the piece she wanted and it just set her off. And she was crying like real tears, crocodile tears. I mean, giant tears coming down her face and she was so upset and, you know, I did what I typically do in those situations. I said, Charlie, come on, baby. You'll, you'll get the piece, lock it up, come on, stop. Then she kept crying and I said, Charlie, baby, you're so loud, everybody's trying to eat, stop. Take it down a notch. And she just looked at me and kept crying and you know, it was like something in me. I don't know why I'm so emotional about it. I don't know what's going on with me. It's like the news, it's everything. It's like too much for me or something. But I just looked at my kid and I'm like, she's five. You're doing to her what people have done to you. Stop. She's upset. Something is upsetting her. Stop. Like, obviously, every time my five-year-old cries, it's not legit, but she's trying to... She's she's past her breaking point, whatever it is. She doesn't need you to keep shushing her or making her feel bad or trying to shut her up, Jamie. Be Do something. Mother her. And it was like a voice in my head. And I just said to her, you know what, baby, come here, come with mommy, you're not in trouble, come here. And she walked with me and cried and I found a bench and I sat on it and I picked her up into my lap facing me and I put her head on my chest and it was like her whole body immediately re like relaxed and I just held her and she sucked her fingers and she totally settled down and I thought, sometimes people just need to be loved. They don't need to be dismissed. They don't need to be told that their feelings are not valid or that they're not real. We can't just dism keep dismissing people like they don't matter. And I know she's my kid, obviously, but it was the realization that sometimes people just need love. It is literally the only answer. And I held her and I smelled her and she just sat with me and she didn't move. This is a kid who never stops moving. She didn't move for five minutes. She just sat on me and I needed it as much as she needed it. And it's so much more, it's so much more effective to love people when they're crying out for help than to just keep dismissing them as if their feelings don't matter because eventually they will break. I just want to remind everybody that part of this whole movement with Coffee Talk is to be better, to get a little uncomfortable so that you can go, okay, why do I feel uncomfortable about loving this person or wanting to help them? Something about it makes me feel uncomfortable. What is it? And pushing through that and really supporting each other and loving each other. It is okay to be kind, even when you don't understand all the details. It is okay to say, I'm going to try love. Let's just try it. All right. I love you guys so much today. Have a great day.